So are, are you a co-founder of the Embark Center? No, no, actually, I was about an hour and a half further south, and I was in the process of starting a Sudbury school. I oh. really wanted to start a Sudbury school, and I had been to Sudbury Valley and Arts and Ideas and South Jersey Sudbury School, and I loved it. I loved visiting them and spending time with them. And Andrea, at the same time I was part of trying to start the Sudbury school, she was starting Embark Center for uh. self-directed education. And my children, who at the time were, I believe, 11 and 13, um, and they had never gone to school. So my husband and I felt strongly that school is your choice mm -hmm. and you should be able to choose that from, you know, four years old, right? So we always asked them, you know, do you want to do this? Is this important to you? Do you want to try it out? And they'd always say no. And I would, I was still teaching in school at the time. I was a band clinician. So I was your person that came in and worked with your clarinet section and stuff like that. So sometimes they would come with me. So they got to come into school and see what school was like. And it was banned and people want to be in band. Right. <laughs> and my kids are like, why does, why does everybody try and get out of here so fast? You know? And so they weren't getting any younger. Right. And so it was taking me a long time, 18 months to start the Sudbury school at this point where my my oldest kid said to me, hey, I, I don't want to wait for this any longer. You mm -hmm. know, I, I really want to be a part of a self-directed education community. And so I called up Andrea and I grilled her. You know, <laughs> I was like, OK. Uh, is this a real self-directed education center? Like, do you have a secret agenda in there? Like, can they play video games all day? Can they sleep? You know, can they, um, you know, how does this, work? you know, how does this all work? You're going to make them do math. And, and so Andrea had said to me, she was like, you know, no, no, we don't make them do anything. And then, and then she said, would you ever want to work at a place like this? And I started to cry and I said, yes, that's my dream. That's what I want to do. So I shifted. Mm. Because it's hard. It's hard to start a school. It's hard to start a center. There's so many things that go into it. And I kept getting tangled up in different, you know, regulations and zoning and Andrea had already taken care of all of that. So we, we went that direction. It's nice. Nice. Yeah. I know yeah. how hard it is because I homeschooled other people's kids for about five years in here in Portland, back in the late nineties into the early two thousands. Um, started and crashed the program multiple times. So yeah, uh, yeah, I know, I know how it goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was e it was easier when somebody else had did it, and I could just go there. Yeah. Right, right, right. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world, where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible? is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.